if you were to have a ton of gold, what would you do with it? Would you immediately exchange it to money and buy a better house, drive a better car, and take a, a 10 years long vacation, travel all over the world, whatever you may want to do it. And people with a ton of money, sometimes they will make ridiculous things out of gold. Some of the craziest things that people will make out of gold. And one example is an Indian guy made T-shirt out of gold. And that's how it looks like. This is a T-shirt made out of gold, and it's worth quarter million dollars. So in special occasions, he will wear this T-shirt, but whenever he wears this T-shirt, he goes with about a dozen of his bodyguards. And then, that's not all. Another man decided to make toilet paper out of gold. And that's how it looks like. It's a real thing. And it's worth $1.3 million. You know, my kids waste toilet paper and see what if I give this toilet paper to them. Now, that's not enough. Uh, people will go even farther. So, a hotel in Dubai, they made toilet bowl out of gold. So, that's how it looks like. I don't know if it's a complete solid gold or it's a plate. But anyways, some people have too much money and too much gold and they don't know what to do with it. So they'll make a toilet paper and toilet bowl out of it. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to show that picture, but someone actually made a, a golden dung. Um, you can Google it. Google has everything, almost. Many thousands of years ago, Israelites, God's people, out of gold, they decided to make certain things. Calf. When Moses ascended up to Mountain Sinai to converse with God, he was having such amazing time with the Lord. He was enjoying intimacy with God. He was hearing clear voice of the Lord, how God was giving detailed account of the law and also design how to build the tabernacle. But he was delaying. He was up there for about 40 days and people became impatient. So they were wondering what happened to Moses. We don't know what happened to Moses, a guy who delivered us out of the bondage of Egypt, and he's not coming down from the mountain Sinai. Maybe God killed him. We don't know. So what will happen to us? Let's come together and let's make our own God. So people brought earrings, which were out of the gold, and they cast it into the fire and made molded calf. And they began to worship and give a sacrifices and dance before it. And God knew about it as God was conversing with Moses still on the mountain Sinai. Go down quickly because the people you brought out of Egypt, they are doing spiritual hold'em before me. So... Moses brings down two tablets of God's law. And even in the mountain, he was interceding on behalf of these people because God said, you know, I will destroy them all. And from you, I will create a, a great nation. So Moses interceded before God. God, don't you remember the covenant you made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And also with the great power, you delivered these people out of Egypt now you're going to kill them then, it will be mischief among all other nations and they will even mock your name. So God hears his voice and God decides to not completely destroy them. But Moses bringing down two tablets of God's law and he himself was interceding on behalf of them. But physically when he saw them, dancing before this golden calf, he was so angry and he threw away two tablets and broke and he ended up bringing judgment upon the people. 3,000 people were killed. 
Levites will kill the brothers who made this golden calf and danced before the idol, and God will judge them with a plague. And from this sad story, there are spiritual lessons that we can learn. So let's turn our Bible to book of Exodus chapter 32, from verse 1 through 20. We are going to cover the entire chapter, but let's read 20 verses. Verse 1. Book of Exodus chapter 32. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get down. For your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people? whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with a great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians speak and say, He brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servant to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of it, I'll give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain, and the two tablets of testimony were in his hand. And tablets were written on both sides, one on the one side, and on the other they were written. Now the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. But he said, It is not the noise of the shout of victory, nor the noise of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing I hear. So it was as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and dancing. So Moses' anger became hot, and he cast the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Then, then he took, took the, the calf, calf which, which they, they had made, made burned burned it in, in the, the fire and ground it to powder, 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 and he scattered it on the, on the water and, and made the children, children of Israel, Israel drink it. it. So God called Moses out of the multitude to the mountain Sinai. Because God wanted to speak to his people directly. However, the people were frightened because God spoke to them in the flaming fire with the earthquake from the mountain Sinai. So people begged Moses, Moses, don't let God speak to us directly, but help you go and listen to the voice of God directly and you deliver their message to us. So God heeded their voice. So God called Moses to cook to come to the top of the mountain Sinai, and Joshua, his servant, followed along. But it was Moses who was conversing with God. He was enjoying such great intimacy with God. But when people waiting at the bottom of the mountain, they become impatient. So we don't know what happened to Moses. 
who delivered us out of the Egypt. So they came to Aaron, make us God, so that we may be able to offer sacrifices and worship them. And Aaron sadly heeded the voice of evil people and cast it into the fire and molded a calf, golden calf, came out and people began to offer sacrifices and eat, drink, and dance, and play before it. And first lesson that we can think about this is when the leader was enjoying such fellowship with God, but his followers were just going astray and forsaking God. And they can, this can easily happen. When we become impatient with God's promises, when God seems to be silent, and when God seems to be delaying His promises over our lives, so we ended up becoming impatient and begin to build our own idols and worship before such idols. And there are many stories in the Bible that happened. Some of the people who received the promises and privileges from God, but they became impatient because God seemed to be silent and He's delaying or fulfilling His promises. So God, people will take in their own hands and build the monuments and build accomplishments and achievements and build their own idols and begin to worship such idol. Abraham was given by God great promises. Your descendants will be like stars in the sky. Your descendants will be like dust at the seashore. But God seemed to be silent for 25 years. His promise is being delayed. So what did he do? Instead of patiently and in faith trusting God until his timing, he heeded the voice of his wife, Sarah, and went into Hagar, and he has begotten Ismael. And that has been headache in the Middle East until today. King Saul, God commanded it through Samuel, wait for seven days as you, before you engage into the world, because Samuel will come and offer sacrifice unto the Lord. Saul was frightened, and he became fearful and he couldn't wait until for seven days. So he ended up offering sacrifices by his own hands, which is a pre prohibited by the law, and offered the sacrifice before Samuel came, and God will relent that he chose Saul as a king of Israel. There are numerous stories in the Bible, people of God, given with the promises, and God was about to bless them and manifest His mighty glory and power through His work. But God's people became impatient, and they took in their own hands and will lose God's blessings, or at least put on heart upon His work and His blessings. And we do that too. We often do that too. When God seems to be silent, when God seems to be powerless, He used to deliver us out of the bondage of Egypt. He divided the Red Sea. He sent the ten plagues over our enemies. God used to answer my prayers time after time. Every day I was walking with God and His hands were so mighty over my life. But nowadays, He seems to be silent for some reason. He's no longer powerful in my life. So I become impatient and I begin to sweat with my own hands and work on my own monuments and achievement and still glory from God. And that puts such heart upon the works of God, upon the blessings that He has prepared. We need to remember right before the dawn comes to our lives. The darkness is the thickest. Right before God will show His glory in our life, that time becomes so impatient. An enemy knows that. Will trigger in our heart and go with our own ways and work with our hands instead of waiting upon God patiently for the promise to be fulfilled. And that's exactly 
what happened. Because God not only delivered these people out of Egypt physically, but God wanted these people His own. God will continually be their God and show glory and power and blessings. So that's why God called Moses out of the multitude to give them the law and the tabernacle. Because the law separates them not only physically from Egyptians, because Egypt always represents the world, but by the law revealing holiness of God and statues of God, separating them by the lifestyle, by holiness. And also God knows they will continually disobey and fail of keeping the law. So God gives them the tabernacle. Because through the tabernacle, by offering animals' blood and animals' sacrifices, that I will restore my relationship with you continually. And that's a foreseen coming Messiah. But these people were prematurely coming out of Egypt without having too much of knowledge of God and will easily end up building idols. Us. We often do that. In our impatience, in our immaturity, we cannot wait God to work, and we ended up building our own monument, losing his pastor blessings. What about us as Christians? Our Moses ascended up to high mountain, which is called heavenly throne. Our Moses which is Jesus Christ, with a great deliverance by his crucifixion and resurrection from the cross. He delivered us out of the bondage of sin, death, and fear, and from the world. And he promised us, I will go up to the mountain where my father dwells, but in due time I will come back to you again and fetch you. But Christ is being delayed. For the last 2,000 years, he hasn't come back to us. So what do many Christians end up doing? They build their own golden calves, and they waste their life away, forgetting the promise their Moses, Jesus Christ, has given to them. And that should not be happening to us. But let's look at Aaron. Aaron was traveling together with his younger brother, Moses. He saw tremendous miracles God performed. God used his own rod. Stretch out your rod against the river of Nile, and it turned into the blood. Stretch out your rod, and God will perform many, many miracles. He eyewitnessed the power of God together with Moses. But when Moses was gone to the mountain, this second in command, will lead the people astray. Not only that, he himself by his own hands will make golden calves and cause the people to worship this idol. What happened to Aaron? This is beyond astounding occasion. How is it? We can assume why Aaron behaves like this. So this is the thing. All of us, we are covered by our delegated authorities. Above us, there's always a physical leaders. But we will know and find out our true faith and maturity when that covering is removed momentarily. Then we will know what we are made of. And in this occasion, we realize what Aaron is made of until then. Even though he experienced such many miracles, even though he was traveling together with Moses, when Moses was gone, his true self just broke off. Isn't it with us as well? We think we are good. We think we are as powerful as our leader. But when our physical leader is gone, that we stumble in our prayer walk. We stumble in our spiritual condition and reveals what state we are in, immaturity and lack of faith. But what happened to Aaron? Why is it 
we can presume few things why Aaron is behaving this way. Because Aaron never experienced school of wilderness. It was Moses who went through 40 years of desert life. There, God molded him, God broke him, God trained him, and his heart was totally sold out for God. But Aaron never went through the school of wilderness. We must remember as God wants to bless us and God wants to use us powerfully for His glory, all of us must go through the school of wilderness. Without wilderness, no one will be shaped and molded to the likeness of Christ Jesus. Aaron skipped the school of wilderness. And when Moses was gone, frailty, his how fragile he was, was totally revealed. As a naked man. Secondly, perhaps Aaron was harboring over bitterness against his younger brother. He was the older brother. I should be the primary leader. Why would God choose my younger brother, Moses, who cannot even speak well? I'm more eloquent. Perhaps in his heart, he was harboring over bitterness with a jealousy against his younger brother. And when the opportunity came that he against God's will, against Moses' vision, he will lead the entire people astray according to his own desire. That happens oftentimes with the assistant leaders, with the subgroup leaders, undermining the vision God gave to primary leader. When the opportunity comes with the, the followers, he will cause a dissension and division and will lead people astray according to his own lustful desire. And more so, Aaron heard the voice of God by second hand. It was Moses who would go into the tent of congregation or go to the mountain, be able to hear the voice of God directly, and will say to his brother Aaron, this is what God spoke to me. And Aaron was delivering that message to God's people with his eloquence. See, when we hear the voice of God indirectly through other people, we lack ownership of that word, of the truth and promise. Because Aaron was lacking intimacy with God, when Moses was gone, that's where he fell. It was Moses who enjoyed intimacy with God. It was Moses who heard the voice of God directly. He took the initiative. He had an ownership and he was enjoying intimacy where Aaron was lacking. It was just a bystander, passively following whatever Moses was doing. And when our physical leader is absent, who we are and what we are made of can be revealed. God gave Adam the command to not eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And he said to Eve, after he heard that voice directly from God, and it was Eve who became vulnerable and was easily tempted and gave in to sin. So brothers and sisters, here's the thing. If we want to be used by God, if we want to enjoy God's blessing, we cannot blame our leaders. This is not how I myself made a decision because my leader told me to do so. Because Pastor told me this, or mother told me this. We cannot blame that. If we are Christian in Christ Jesus, all of us have a privilege to hear the voice of God directly. Every one of us has blessing to enjoy intimacy with God. And all of us must take ownership of our life and our ministry and our vision. And we cannot blame leaders. And because of their absence, that's how it became. Take ownership. Enjoy intimacy. Hear the word of God directly for yourself. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Meditate God's word. Let the logos of his word become rama for your own life without blaming anyone else. And then from this story, there is also another lesson the importance of physical presence of our leaders. Yes, we need to look towards 
our ultimate leader, who is Jesus Christ. But he's invisible. He sits on the throne of God. And when physical leader is absent in our life, we stumble. We become weak. When that happens, and when we assess our spirituality and examine and realize weakness of myself, that's a sign from God. You need to increase your faith. You need to discipline yourself even more. You need to mature to the likeness of Christ Jesus. You should not be too much dependent upon your physical leader. God brought me to a level where I don't think I'm dependent to the leadership of Pastor Han. Whether Pastor Han is at home or he's away abroad in the mission field, my walk with Jesus Christ, my prayer life does not alter. Whether he's absent or present. How about you? What about your leaders? When your leaders are absent or present, does it influence your daily walk with God? Does it influence your prayer life? If it does, God wants you to be mature. You know, it's inevitable. If you are part of this Grace Korean Church or GMI, your leader, your pastor, will be frequently absent on Sundays. So this is my excuse. You know, in Orange County, there are many hamburger shops. And local hamburger shop may be owned by mom and pop. That's a one hamburger shop. And they can be faithful serving their own customers. But our church is not like local hamburger shop owned by mom and pop. Nothing wrong with it. But we are like McDonald's. We have a franchise all over the world. We have over 10,000 churches. So your pastors, your leaders are working in the headquarter office. Not only they can serve their own customers with the spiritual food, but they need to also help out other McDonald's in the world. That's why they travel. Pastor, I went to Israel. I went to Russia. Okay, so much with the excuses. But take it as your opportunity. When your physical leader is absent in your life, be alert even more. Pray even more. Pray for Sunday service more. Even let there be thicker presence of God when your leader is absent. Why not? God is your God as well. Train yourself so that you are not influenced by physical presence of your leader because ultimately our leader is Jesus Christ. Then as the story continues, people brought earrings of gold to Aaron and made a golden calf. These earrings are from Egypt because when God was delivering these people, God brought such fear into the hearts of Egyptians. You can go any house, you can demand anything you like, gold, silver, bronze, all the materials. So as they were escaping out of the land of Egypt, they brought all these materials and physical blessings because in the eyes of God, you served the 430 years for Egyptians and they didn't pay you enough. So this is your payment day. So they were able to bring all this gold. But there's a thing. Golden earring in their ear is a lingering heart towards Egypt. That represents their desire for this world. Even though they were separated from God, that was what they had in their heart. Love for the money, love for the world, the lust of the flesh. And it represented and came out in the golden calf. But what did Moses do? He grinded it and made them into the powder, put them into the water, and asked the people to drink it. When they drink it, what will happen? The gold will come out as dung. That represents the reality of our desire for the gold. In the end, it goes out, makes our idol, and we drink it, it comes out as dung. That's the reality of it. 
It's a vanity. It's an emptiness. Every one of us is given with a golden earring. Gold represents talents, gifts, time, days, resources God has given to every one of us while we live on this earth. We have a choice to make. With the golden earrings, are we going to make our own golden calf or are we going to use them to build his tabernacle? Because these are the same people later, after repentance, as the tabernacle was being built, they offered gold to build the tabernacle of God. Because almost everything in the tabernacle was made by gold. God has given every one of us gold, which is his talent. It's his gift. This he has given us. Are we going to continually make a golden calf because our Moses is being delayed to come back to us? Or are we going to make a tabernacle to glorify God, to use it to worship him, to use it to expand his kingdom? That is our choice. That is our choice. Then let's look at Moses. Moses receiving two tablets of God's law. He comes down from the mountain and he sees God's people sinning against God. What does he do? He's angry. And he throws away two tablets of God's law. God himself with his finger has written Ten Commandments and he will break them out of anger. And he will bring judgment and anyone who stands with God come out. Levites come out. Levites begin to kill those people who played with the idol. 3,000 people died. Then later God brings a plague upon them. That's what happens when we hold God's law upon our hands. Whenever we see a brother and sister stumbles and sins against God, when we hold the law upon our hands, we will become angry at them and we will judge them and we will punish them and we will condemn them. That's what God's law does. When we hold the laws upon our hands and when we look at our community, brothers and sisters are stumbling. That's exactly what we do. Do you get angry when you see brother and sister falling and sinning against God? And do you condemn them? Do you judge them? In your hands, look at. You have a tablet of God's law. But we as Christians, in our own hands, we should hold the tablets of grace, tablets of gospel. And when we hold them, whenever we see brother and sister sin, against God, and they fail. Instead of becoming angry at them, instead of immediately casting judgment upon them, we show compassion upon them. Because in our hands, there are tablets of grace in the gospel. And we look at our life, and in the fear of the Lord, Lord, I also have a potentiality of sin just like him, and sin just like her, even in greater way. So instead of con condemning them, I look at my own life and I fearfully walk with you, asking you and begging you, God, would you sustain me, uphold me, let my life be pleasing to you. Last week, our founding pastor, Pastor Kim, in his uh, such weak health, he was uh, teaching second generation pastors to infuse the passion for the gospel. He also said, Whenever other people sin, other pastors fall, we have no right to judge them. But instead, we need to have a time of reflecting upon our own life and fearfully walk with God. Because I also have such a great potential to sin like that, even in greater way, and show compassion upon them and myself walk fearfully with the Lord. Let's remember in our own hands, we no longer have a tablet of law which Moses broke. But in our own hands, we have a tablet of grace and the gospel. You know, as we concluded this message, Moses 
after from his hands the laws were broken. He comes before God and he again intercedes on behalf of this fallen people. And he resembles forthcoming Messiah, Jesus Christ. This is part of his prayer he offered to the Lord. Chapter 32, verse 32. Moses says, Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book which you have written. What he's asking is, if you cannot forgive sins of these people, take my name away from book of life. I can be condemned as well. Lord, have a mercy upon them. Forgive their sins. Otherwise, blot out my name from the book of life. God still spared life of Moses. But another Moses, 3,000 years later, he was willing to sacrifice his own life on the cross. God forgive their sins. You can take my life. Let my life be sacrificed on that cross. If it means it brings atonement for these sinful people, I will have my life be blotted out. And our Jesus, our Moses, sacrificed his own life and gave a way for us to be redeemed and reconciled back to God. Not that is a leader. Every leader is intercessor. Moses standing in the gap between God and his people. While he himself walked in the fear of the Lord, obtaining holiness and stands in the gap and appease wrath of God to bring about forgiveness of his people. As a Christian leaders, Yes, we see our followers stumble. Yes, we see our brothers and sisters end up sinning, and sinning continuously, and without casting judgment, with a compassion, while we walk in the fear of the Lord, pursuing holiness, lifting up our holy hands towards God, and asking God, Lord, would you forgive their sins? Would you restore them? Would you continually make them disciples of Jesus Christ until image of God in their heart may be fully recovered. As you know, I go to KM service at 720 every Sunday. Today, as a Pastor Han was preaching, he shared a true story that happened, and it relates to our message here today. More than 10 years ago, in the city of Oklahoma, there was a great fire in a large apartment. And the firemen and fire trucks came and tried to quench the flame. And among the crowd that were watching the flame, there was a particular woman. She was uh, screaming, yelling, and crying out, my baby, my baby, because her baby was uh, caught in the room in her apartment. And there was uh, one brave fireman willing to risk his own life, climbed up ladder, and went inside the room, found the baby, and wrapped her with a blanket. Risking his own life, came down. As he was coming down, people at the bottom were clapping hands, cheering, complimenting him. But as this fireman gave this blanket to the woman, she opened the blanket up. She began to wail and cry and scream because inside a blanket was not her baby. It was a doll. In the smoke, the fireman mistakenly took the doll instead of the baby, risking his own life to nothing. Our lives can be like that because our Moses is being delayed to come back to fetch us. We invest into vanity. We give our gold, our time, our energy, our days to deliver a doll. At the end, it's empty. It's empty. 
What have I done with my life? What have I invested into this to deliver a door? My energy, my time, my talents, my gold, my money, my resources, everything wasted. We hold the truth. We know as we have received eternal heaven and the glory. Let us not waste our gold, building golden cows. Instead, let's invest it into his tabernacle. Let us all rise. Let's call the name of Jesus three times and pray, God, forgive me because I cannot blame and accuse Israelites more than enough, more than one time that I have made my own golden calf. But repeatedly in Christ Jesus, you have forgiven my sin, my idolatry, my covetousness, my fornication, my waste of time and energy. Lord, make my life meaningful. Let my gold be invested into building your tabernacle to enjoy intimacy with you to fully worship you, to see your people restored back. Let me be like Moses standing in the gap between you and unsaved people in succeeding for their own salvation. God, let me not make my own monument. Let me not run into impatient act, trusting your promises. Help me to fully enjoy the life you have given us here on earth. There's a greater glory waits for us. There's a greater reward waiting for us, Lord. Have a mercy upon us. Let's call his name and pray. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for your grace, Father.